All right, we are continuing on with section 11.4, arc length and evaluating trig functions in radians. Um, so first of all, to find arc length, this is the formula that we are gonna need. Our arc length, S, is equal to R, which is your radius, times um, your central angle. But the key is here, your central angle has to be in radians in order to use this formula. So anytime you see an angle measure given in degrees, convert it to radians first, multiply that by your radius, and that's it. You are done. So example number one here says find the arc length with a radius of 5 centimeters and a central angle 45. So if you want, you can go ahead and draw yourself a picture. 45 degrees central angle. My radius is 5. So again, in order to use... S equals my radius times my angle, I need to convert my angle to radians first. So we'll take 45 times, I'll put 45 over 1, 45 um, times pi over 180. Okay, so if we um, reduce always, if you can, we can divide both 45 and 180 by 45. So 45 divided by 45 is 1, 180 divided by 45 is 4. So 45 degrees would convert to pi over 4 radians. So then if you want to find your um, arc length, that would be like the distance from here to here. We call that S. We take our, ra our radius times the angle measure in radians, pi over 4. 5 times pi over 4 is 5 pi over 4. And that's basically it. So we'll do one more here and then we'll move on to the next part of section 11.4. So it says find the arc length with a radius of 12 inches and a central angle of 120. So again, if you want, draw yourself a picture, um, 120 degrees. My radius this time is 12. So the first thing again is to convert your angle to degrees. So multiply by pi over, or to radians, sorry, from degrees to radians. Multiply by pi over 180. Um, reduce if you can, so we can divide them both by 10, so now we have 12 and 18, and then both of those are divisible by 6, so we'll get um, 2 and 3. So 120 degrees converts to 2 pi over 3 radians, so to find the arc length S, take your radius 12 times your angle in radians, so 12 pi over, or 2 pi over 3. And then, so if we multiply across here, we will end up with 24 pi over 3. And if you simplify that, your arc length is 8 pi. And I guess I should. I was given a unit of measure, so I should use a unit of measure. So 8 pi inches. So the other one then would have been um, 5 pi over 4 centimeters because I was given that unit of measure. Okay, so that's the first part, arc length. You just need to know your degrees in radians and then multiply it times your radius length. The second part here is evaluating trig functions with radians. So here are the steps if you want them, but the first thing is gonna to be to convert the radians to degrees now. Um, and then we're gonna draw a quick picture. And then if you can, we're gonna use special right triangles. Sometimes that's not gonna be an option. But here's your key to when you probably will have to use special right triangles. It says give an exact answer, that means no decimals. So that means either A, it's gonna be really nice numbers, or B, it's gonna be special right triangles, and in most cases, it'll be option B. So step number one, it says to convert radians to degrees. So let's take pi over six times 180 over pi this time, because I want my pi's diagonal from each other because I want them to cancel out. Um, and then if you wanna simplify diagonally again, um, 180 and 6 are both divisible by 6, so we get 1 and we get 30. So pi over 6 in degrees is 30 degrees. So we are actually evaluating cosine of 30 degrees. Now here's where your special right triangle comes into play. If you were to draw this, so we start from our terminal side in standard position, we would draw our angle up here to 30 degrees. We would make this right triangle, okay? We know that opposite of our 30 degrees is, we'll just call it one, 
the hypotenuse is 2, and then the long side would be the square root of 3, or my short side, which is 1 times the square root of 3. The side opposite is 60. Okay, and because we are evaluating cosine from, uh, let's pick a different color, from this angle here, cosine is opposite over hypotenuse. So cosine of 30 degrees would be the opposite side, which is 1 over the hypotenuse, which is 2. Cosine, um, or sorry, goodness, I said I wrote it adjacent. It's, it is adjacent, not opposite. So adjacent over hypotenuse. And then if you can uh, simplify, like um, rationalizing the denominator or simplify the fraction, you should always do that. But in this case, the square root of 3 is fine. So there is cosine of 30, which is also pi over 6 radians. Um, so here it says evaluate the trig function using a calculator. Now, we could, um, we could just type this into our calculator as is, but we'd have to go and change the settings from degrees to radians which you certainly can do. Just make sure to switch it back because most everything we do will be in degrees. Or you could just convert pi over 5 to degrees first by multiplying by 180 over pi. So the pi's cancel, and then um, 5 and 180 are both divisible by 5. So let's see, it would be 1 and 36. So we're actually evaluating sine of... 36 degrees, which it does say use a calculator. So if you hop on over to your calculator quick, let it load up. You just type in, I'm going to make sure mine's in degrees, still it is. So go sine of 36, hit enter, and we get about 0.59 if we round. I mean, you can go a few more decimal places, but 0.59. Okay, evaluate the trig function using a calculator. So same thing. This should tell you that um, 5 pi over 8 is not going to simplify nicely to a special right triangle, so like a 30, 60, or 45 degree angle. But let's convert it quickly here. Um, so let's take 5 pi over 8 times 180 over pi. The pi's will reduce. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, what else could we do? 8 and 180 are both divisible by 4, so that would be 2 and 45. Um, and that that's going to be it. So along the top, I have 5 times 45, which is 225. On the bottom, I have 2. So if you divide, you get 112.5 degrees. So we want to figure out cotangent of... 112.5 degrees. Now, if you remember, cotangent and tangent are linked together. Cotangent is the same thing as 1 over tangent, so we can just use that because there is no cotangent button on your calculator. So on my calculator, we'll go 1 divided by tangent of 112.5 degrees, and of course, it's not going to come out nicely. Oh, man try that again. 1 divided by a tangent of 112.5 and we get negative 0.41. So there you go. So here's another one, a good example of an exact answer in the last example, of course. So when you see this little exact answer thing here, that probably means it's going to be a special right triangle. But let's convert pi over 4 to see if it is a special right triangle indeed. Um, so pi over 4 times 180 over pi. The pi's will cancel. 180 and 4 are both divisible by 4, so we get 1 and 45. So we are actually figuring out the secant of 45 degrees. Now that might not mean a whole lot to you, or you can look at it like this then, 1 over cosine of 45 degrees. It does not matter. Um, but let's draw our special right triangle. So anytime you have a nice angle, 45 degree, 30, or 60, 
you can just draw your little diagram here. We'll start at the initial side. Our terminal side will be here at 45 degrees. We'll make our right triangle. That means that's also 45. But remember, we're going from this angle. It really won't matter, but that's just where I'm going from, a 45 degree angle. Now in a 45, 45, 90, the relationship is one, one, and then the square root of two. The two legs are the same, and then the hypotenuse is the leg times the square root of two. So secant, like I said, secant and cosine, they go together. So if you're looking at cosine, it would be adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine of 45 would be 1 over the square root of 2. But we don't want cosine, we want secant, so you can just flip that relationship. So secant of 45 would be the square root of 2 over 1 or just the square root of 2. So again, the key here is the exact answer tells you you're probably going to be dealing with special right triangles. And that will take care of section 11.4.